Oh, geez, I'm gonna have to work on that. Hello, Johanna, Nick. Hello. Hey. From Lucifer. Actually, you know what I want to do here? Give me a second. Bear with me. Um, I like to do these. Should have been more prepared. Two seconds here and we'll get ready to rock. I'm going to put you guys on speaker. Okay, that's what I like better. Okay. So anyways, I'm glad to uh, see you guys. And uh, um, honest to God, when um, I was sent over um, my desk, um, your, your new album, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you. Um, um, as a Canadian, I grew up with um, metal. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Both and both. Okay. Um, uh, Merciful Fate, Venom, King Diamond, all those bands, right? And so I see a band named Lucifer, and I've heard of you guys for a while, but I mean, I'm a busy guy. And I thought, okay, what can I expect from Lucifer? And I'm thinking kind of along the lines of Merciful Fate, but I was totally wrong and I was totally grateful. I swear to God, you guys are so friggin' melodic. It's, it's unreal. And I can definitely, definitely hear in your voice, Johanna, Pat Benatar, um, Ann Wilson, um, obviously Stevie Nicks. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that you sing like that. I'm just saying there's kind of a, a sound. I, I do love um, Stevie Nicks and I love Ann Wilson, that's for sure. Um, who, who, was yeah, your, but, hmm? who was your influences growing up? Um, growing up, um, probably also um, more like uh, Merciful Fate and Glenn Danzig and, <laughs> and Ozzy Osbourne and you know but but you mean like um, female singers female singers um, well the thing is that I think that I listened to like you know Jefferson Airplane and and Stevie Nicks era Fleetwood Mac and and Heart and stuff that came much later in my life really? I grew up as yeah yeah I grew up as a metal kid and nice. um, when I was a teenager um when i was like around 15, 10 years ago you're being very kind <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah yeah like five years ago um then i was totally into you know extreme metal it was black metal death metal doom uh sure. first of all, and that came later my love for 70s heavy rock and so on um i think the older i got the more backwards i looked you know in, into the history of music so yeah. um yeah but yes i mean i am um vocally i guess um well the thing is i never really looked for inspiration when i started singing at female other singers um but yeah, the um, past 15 years, I've been listening a lot to, um, like I said, you know, um, I love Stevie Nicks and I, and I love uh, Grace Slick and I like the shocking blue when it comes to female singers. But I also like female singers um, that I don't sound like at all. Like I love Patti Smith, for example, and that's a different style. I would think that I'm vocally maybe more influenced by guys mostly because that's just what you find in heavy rock, yeah. you know. Um, one i actually got a question for you. you 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 and nick are married i'm just wondering how you two dark souls got together uh through the love of lois the cult actually yeah oh okay. the, the black was ceremony the, was that you had through you met in a, at a black ceremony I, I, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of yeah. course, we met yeah. uh, in a cemetery chapel, actually. Yeah, well, um, that's what I read, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, one more question for you, Joanna, about music and uh, metal and uh, females. Um, there's a Canadian, and she's very popular in Germany and in Europe. Lee Aaron, the metal queen. Yes, I've heard of her. Oh, you are you okay? So you're familiar with uh a fellow connect? Yeah. I mean, I, I know who Lee Aaron is, yeah. and I know that she's like the poster girl of the 80s, right? For for yeah. metal boys. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um don't beat me, Lee Aaron. I I'm not too familiar with the music. Maybe I should actually maybe you can um give me a recommendation. Um 
Uh, you, YouTube an album called Metal Queen. Metal Queen, okay. I yeah. do remember from, uh, going through the record stores because when I saw that, it was like, oh, this is the female Man of War. That's how it looked. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, she's very, um, I mean, let's get back to you guys in a second, but she's very, very talented. Like, she doesn't just sing metal, but she can do blues and jazz. And just like Joanna, like, your voice is just incredible. Um, where did, did you train for vocal or did you just naturally have it? Um, neither. Um, I, um, I don't think I naturally have it. I think I'm just so much of a music fan that um, and I started very early uh, listening to music and absorbing how people sing and trying it out, just singing to myself, kind of, um, that I taught myself how to sing. Um, I don't think that I naturally have like a great rock voice or anything. I think it's oh, just I think when I, beg to disagree. I, I disagree. <laughs> you have a great voice. Right Thank there? you, guys. <laughs> but I think you can actually, you know, if um, I think that's something you can teach yourself if you're really into it, if you love music that much. Right, right. Put that into different directions. So Nick, you played drums, guitar, bass, uh, everything else. Um, what were your no. influences growing up? Not everything else. <laughs> that's what I play. <laughs> okay. Well, everything else just means the first three I said. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> So what, what were your uh, musical influences growing up? Because I know that you obviously co collaborate in the songwriting a bit. So who um, influenced you growing up? Uh, for me, it's very specific. I saw a picture of Kiss uh, when I was seven. Yeah. And that was it. So I was uh, the biggest fan in my neighborhood without hearing them. Uh, I I, my mind was made up. It was kind of the, well. First of all, like Kiss is a theatric band. They they do have some great music, especially when Ace Frehley was in the band. But um, that's, that's the, sorry, that's the only time. I'm I'm sorry to say. For no, me, Kiss yeah, is no, Ace, Ace has got a bad rap over the years, and it's too bad. So let's get to the album. I, I have to tell you, it's very melodic. It's very psychedelic at times. Um, there's a there's about three songs that I oh um. The funeral pyre reminds me of, and you guys will know this, To One Far Away, that instrumental on the Merciful Fate Don't Break the Oath album. Yeah. Oh, I never thought of it. Pardon me? Mm -hmm. I never thought about it that way, but that's cool. Yeah, because you've got a, you've got a, a, a black metal kind of a band, you know, thing going on. And then you have right in the middle, you have some beautiful melodies, right? Just to prove that you guys are musicians and not just cliche kind of a blah band. You know what I mean? So I like that. I like Mausoleum. Um, obviously, uh, bring me your head. We'll get back to that in a sec. But um, Louise, bring bring me a, bring me around on the songwriting and what's, what that, that song's about. Louise is our first song that kind of dabbles its fingers in southern rock. Yeah, and it was our attempt to try to sound like a, a Black Sabbath Leonard Skinner. <laughs> that was our idea. Okay, the songwriting, anything behind the lyrics or? Are the lyrics? Is uh, everything. Yeah, lyrics, it, this is kind of um, actually a song from one woman to another, um, I'm speaking to another woman um, that is unable to uh, get out of a toxic relationship. So I'm trying to comfort her with that song. Uh, yeah, and that's because, you know, most of the Lucifer songs are actually um, kind of personal stories, so. And an, an empowerment. Yeah, I'm trying to empower another woman. Yeah. I've, read, I've read that about you. You don't take no shit from no one. Well, at least not now anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Add it up to here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you were you were born and raised in Germany. Yeah. And um, when did you relocate to uh, Sweden? I think about uh, three and a half years ago. Okay. So uh, what's the temperature in Sweden right now is in respect to um, the pandemic and restrictions? I think it just got everything got lifted last week. Yeah, well, we're living in Canada here where we're almost a communist country. It's, it's pretty bad. So I've been asked 
by my friends and family and myself to ask Lucifer if he can just take a little bit of heat off of us, please. Well, I'm, I'm trying to do my magic. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to blow some ice cold. <laughs> I mean, it, it depends on how you see it. In Sweden, we had basically no restriction. We just had recommendations and that yeah. didn't turn out too good either. It didn't work that way. No. I don't think you can. So, yeah. So it's, you know, it's it goes a little both ways. Uh, here, here, I think it's here it's going oh, one way down <laughs> it's pretty bad but then again we just want the pandemic to be over so yeah. we can tour and tour. see other so i've seen you i see you have a, a whack of tour dates already booked into next year um any chances of coming here to canada yeah. yes absolutely there was a travel ban right um but now with the borders opening and um um, we are right now waiting our visas to come through. Right. So that, that's just a matter of hopefully just a few more weeks. And then we can start looking into booking a tour in North America. So that being Canada and the US. Hopefully sometime next year, probably more likely. In total. Yeah, for sure. Um so there's been some lineup changes. Obviously, uh, Joanna, you have been the uh, mainstay in the band. Um, and so you've gone through some um, members. Um, I've been, I, I received a message this morning from Interpol and they want to know where the bodies are buried. And um, usually um, I, um, well, after I, Boiled the bones, the flesh of the bones. Um, right, right, right. Well, that's, yeah. You know, because I'm trying to, my plan is to kind of recreate um, a King Diamond live show. You know, I, I would like to have this um, microphone. Yeah, use see. a real bone. Use yeah. a real bone, right? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, for sure. So, but, so do you, you have a spot though designated where they're buried, but you just don't want to give it away right now. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to build the world's largest cemetery so I can live on you're, it. You're on your way. Well, <laughs> 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 no, that's, that's great. Um, I, I love how you're playing along. You guys are, you guys are awesome. Um, I define your sound as, um, 60s well no 70s psychedelic but you have a really good melodic rock how would you describe your sound to uh the two people that are living under snowbanks in canada that don't know about you i would describe it as um i don't know pentagram meets april wine 70s april wine april wine a canadian band <laughs> Maybe a little a little touch of razor in there too. You've done some homework <laughs> on Canada, right on. I love it. I don't need to he do knew homework. that already. <laughs> Did you? It's <laughs> he's, he's like the biggest anvil fan. How, how uh, anvil? Oh, did, you say, yes. did you say anvil or April wine? I say both. Okay, perfect. Yeah, anvil's good as well. Um, yeah, for but sure. So you must not forget. I think maybe Lucifer would, could also be described as a cross between Black Sabbath and Teenage Head. I agree. I definitely agree. Um, speaking on the Canadian tone, so we've got those two out of there. Um, Rush, Triumph, or Loverboy? Pick one. Uh, first three Triumph albums. I love it, man, because I'm a big Triumph fan, but everybody goes with Rush because Rush is mostly well known. But yeah, I, I'm a Triumph fan, so I'm not sure about you, Joanna. Uh, I, I was just going to say it's hard to ask me about Rush because I do like the first album a lot. Um, but after that, it gets too proggy for me. Um, Interesting, yes. You know, I think the first album rocks and the rest becomes a little bit too nerdy. Okay. I, I, it's not rock and roll enough for me. I like dirty rock and roll. That's yeah, yeah. Well, it's not. Um, coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. 
black or with cream or sugar? I'm just bugging you. Never mind. <laughs> Can I, can black, I, I, black I, I, and um, I take it black, please. You take the black. I take it black in the morning, and then after breakfast, I have black <laughs> with a dash of sweetened almond milk or oat milk. You know what? On, honestly, God, I've been drinking that lately, and the reason why is because when you buy a carton of the almond or the oat milk, the exp expiration date is six weeks out. So yeah, and it's so much healthier for you too. It is it's a lot healthier. healthier. Well, yeah. I mean, you guys are going to live, you know, till eternity anyways. I don't know what it matters to you, but to us humans, it matters. So um, <laughs> what else do we got on the docket here? Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, I think, oh, your videos. I love the videos and the cinema, cinematography, the way that you guys have your videos set out like obviously videos are a short movie but you actually have it in there like a short movie like you mean you have the introduction you have the ending credits how did you guys come up with that kind of a concept because it's really it's unique it's not really it's it's basically all we do is some kind of rip off from stuff that we love from the late 60s or 70s well it's unique to me <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's awesome we take that thank you <laughs> you're welcome no I, I really love it it's very interesting in your videos and um whoever does your video um production uh deserves a lot of credit and i'm sure that you're in on that as well it's you uh, it's a uh, the the concept comes from johanna and then we have a director that does exactly what we tell them to do so bring me your head. Was that uh, filmed in, uh, where was it filmed? In Stockholm. In Stockholm? Okay. Um, and that, uh, that single is just really, really good. Um, describe a bit about uh, that song and, and the meaning behind it. Well, musically, it's also a ripoff kind of of a Rocky Erickson riff. Yeah, that's, yeah, one lick is lifted. One lick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the lyrics are about basically... Bad guys. Yeah, bad guys. But not as in bad as in good, but bad. Yeah, bad not, not the good kind of bad. <laughs> not the bad that you and I like, you know? And yeah. now this, this is more about, this is my personal revenge song towards some assholes I had to deal with in my life. That's it. I'm just fantasizing about their heads being brought to me on a silver platter. Well, I mean, you don't really have to fantasize. I mean, you can do what you want with Lucifer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, you need to add to that uh, cemetery collection. So, I mean, why not? Yep, exactly. Might as well just have one part of the cemetery just for heads. That's awesome. So. Um, do you live in a castle? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, have you um, have you been on on a bill with uh, King Diamond or anything? Not yet. Not yet. It is funny though because um, a friend of mine sent me an interview snippet once, uh, a German journalist, yeah. and it was like right after my previous band, The Oath, broke up, and. In that video snippet, he's talking to um, King Diamond, and right. uh, he said, "Do you know that there is a band called uh, The Oath? You know, after Don't Break the Oath." Uh, yes, yes, I've heard of them. Um, it's these two blonde girls, right? Um, yeah, I'm not really supposed to talk about this, but we were looking into them because they were looking for a support band, right? For yeah. King Diamond. And he found out that The Oath had already broken up. So. Uh, and then my friend uh, said to him, well, she has a new band called Ah, oh, yeah, okay. And then they switched topic. Anyways, what I'm co what what is coming down to, I hope he will remember this. <laughs> you probably forgot it in the right second. No, it would be great, I think, if we would get a chance to tour with, um, I mean, preferably Merciful Fate, who are going out right now. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be so cool. It would be one of my dreams. There's um. There's a heavy dark metal um, kind of a, how do you say, following in the Scandinavian countries. Would you agree? 
like here in here in the in North America, you've got some, but it's I, I think Finland especially and and uh, Denmark and Sweden. There's there's a heavy dark metal um, following. Would you agree? And do you know why? Would you? Can you assess? Uh, is, I think is it because the um, this is this is what I take on it. Part of the year in certain parts of Finland and you know Scandinavia, it's dark for like 18 hours of the day. So that's why I've read. Am I right? Or no? Oh well, no. In the in the way up north in Canada, you got the same thing. But yeah, we have no probably... people up there. It's too cold. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. No, you. Yeah, I think you're partly right. You know, it has to do with a lot of things, but uh, that could have a little bit to do with it, probably. How would you explain Florida death metal, though? Yeah, that then it doesn't. <laughs> but then again, they were all wearing shorts, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, um, no, I, I do believe if you look at uh, culture and music from certain cultures, um, the more up north you go around the globe, the more earnest and serious things might become. You know, I mean, reggae doesn't come from the north, right? I mean, oh. <laughs> so in general, you might be onto something there. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll go with that. Um, so what, when is your next live gig? Is it the 28th or when, when do you play uh, live next? Next month in November. 12th of November. Yeah, we, we're starting a tour uh, in Europe, a European tour that's two weeks, two and a half weeks long. That's going to be our first tour in almost two years. Wow. So have you started rehearsal? Well, I guess it's next month. So you probably haven't started rehearsals, but you will be soon, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, yes, we have started rehearsing because when you don't play, you know, you don't want to. I mean, you automatically become show rusty. Yeah. You know, uh, because you well, just can't. That, isn't that what tequila is for? <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, I'm not, okay. I'm, I'm more of a or, or, um, or goat's blood in your case. No, <laughs> I, I mean, if it, no, I wouldn't kill a goat. I love animals more than humans. So you, I would, it. you just have to drain it a bit and then stitch them up. It would be a virgin. It has to be classic, a classic human virgin. All right. All right. Well, I don't know any of those. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think they exist. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so who's who's going to be um, on tour with you? Who are you bringing with you? Uh, a band called Dead Lord from uh, Stockholm as well. Okay, okay. A guitar awesome. player he actually plays in that band as well, so he has to do two shows a night. Oh well, at least he's get well. He's get he's getting paid twice. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, you, you might have to reconsider that one. <laughs> okay, so up in, uh, I won't keep you very much longer, guys. What time is it there? About 7 o'clock p.m.? Yeah, something like, yeah, 7.30. Mm -hmm. It's 1.30 here, Eastern in Canada, so in the afternoon. Um, living in Sweden, um, Nick especially, you are you hockey fans? Uh, most people are, but I'm not. I, I think I'm, I'm, um, when it comes to any kind of sport, yeah. I just, my, my take on it is that uh, music helped me from sports. It saved me from sports. Oh, okay. So you're, you're admitting you were not a good athlete, so you took up the drums. I'm a terrible athlete. <laughs> well just like Joanna said earlier you can do anything you want you just gotta try but I don't want I hate sports <laughs> so we are on the same page yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't tell you anything about uh, I know there's probably been one or two Swedish hockey players over in North America one or I... two oh man you are way out of it no there's dozens okay three then. you've got uh, no you've got uh, Rasmus Sandun uh sand in right now but anyways we'll, we'll digress uh joanna can you sing us something a cappella right now because your voice is beautiful uh, i know you're a bit rusty so um we'll uh, uh i'm not rusty with singing i'm singing all the time but um what do you want to hear no. um the chorus to bring me your head oh no nee, that's embarrassing no i'm not gonna sing that well, you, that. you asked me <laughs> yeah i so, wanted to see 
<laughs> keeping the option. No, let's let's keep that for you know. Come uh, if anybody watches this, come to one of our Canadian shows next year. Watch okay. me. Okay. You. So, has your management uh, started looking for venues, uh, or is that a little bit too far in advance for right now? Uh, no, uh, well, it's like this. Um, Hold on, you're looking at management here. Actually, that's true. Yeah, I am the manager <laughs> of the oh, band. Uh, you're, 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 you're the the Lord of Darkness and the manager. Oh yeah. Yes, and um, I, um, I think Nika wanted to sing a song for you. Uh, yeah, we uh, want to hear something, something, <laughs> something. Uh, no, but um, uh, to swap topics again, um, <laughs> since the borders have uh, now opened uh, and um, the visas are starting to come in, um, mm -hmm. as, as that process is finished, we can start booking. And I am pretty sure that we'll come to North America, meaning Canada and the US next year. And I think it's safe to say that if we uh, bump into you when we play a show, Yep. Help us on the shoulder, uh, shoulder and uh, buy me a shot of tequila and I will promise I will try to convince Johanna to sing directly to you. Well, if I had a tequila, I would sing for yeah. you. Well, I'm just I think gonna, that hold on, hold on. I just emailed you tequila. Good. It doesn't work like that, man. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were the Lord of Darkness, the Queen of Hell. I'm, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just teasing it's uh, no, uh, across the ocean, it has to be in the same color. Yeah, thing. you know what? Good point, Nick. Going across the ocean, it'll be watered down by the time it gets to you guys. So, <laughs> so uh, you know what? I appreciate you guys taking your time out for me in Canada. Um, everybody hit that uh, subscribe button or else the uh, powers that be are going to get you. The powers that be are <laughs> Lucifer. Oh, one more thing. Uh, can you take some heat off of Canada here? We're in a bad spot. I'm going to do a magic ritual later. Another, I just wanted to make sure you got that out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. right well, I yeah. appreciate your guys' time. You know what? To Lose for Four is, is really good album. I'm going to do a review about it, and I'm going to definitely promote it. And uh, it doesn't need much promotion once it, the word gets out, but... Uh, you know what? Uh, I really appreciate it, guys, and uh, have a great day. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. It was awesome talking to you. you Bless it be the. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Bye. Take care. Bye. -bye. <laughs>